Hello fellow Floridians, we are back for an all new exciting 2023 season with your favorite captains, all new reports and ways to up your angling game like never before, right Rick? You're absolutely right Bree. and you know what else we're going to do this year? Guys, we're going to celebrate our 500th episode and just like always, our nine expert guys are standing by to keep you guys a abreast of exactly what's going on all exactly. the time. Exactly, so get ready to reel in the adventures on the Florida Insider Fishing Report which starts now. now. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Well, Rick, we are back in the studio, ready to explore the bountiful Florida waters. And for our first week in action, our captains have prepared some detailed reports for catching my personal favorite inshore species, snook. It is really one of my favorites too, Bree. What I love so much about snook is that I can go down a shoreline using my Rodan trolling motor, and I can use that bass tackle. I love throwing a six and a half foot or a six foot rod with a Berkeley topwater plug on the end and watching it walk the dog and seeing that big bucket mouth come up and oh, eat it right on the top. There's I nothing agree. better. I agree with you. But before we see who our first captain is, let's go over to the CCA workbench. And of course, welcome back Dave Farrell. It's good to be back, Bree. Here's that little rod that uh, Rick was just talking about. A little, little walker on there, a little bait caster, catching snook. That's what we're talking about. Today is catching snook on artificial lures. It's going to uh, be fun. That sounds like a blast. It is. Let's fun. go right now. Well, we've got the perfect captain for the occasion, starting us out in the Casa Vieja Southwest region. So, Ron Houston, tell us what we got to do. Well, you know, Rick, Bree, and Dave, it's really great to be back. What I'm really excited about is some of the new surprises and product that'll be coming out that we've been working with with some of our existing pro uh, sponsors we've had over the years. Stay tuned for all that. But you know what? There are many ways to target snook, but let's let's really talk about what's going to be happening as we approach spring right now. You know, the fish should start making their way out of the backcountry winter ha haunts and start to set up along the passes, beaches, middle bays, intercoastal docks and seawalls, near shore wrecks, along with artificial reefs, and don't forget those bridge spans. Now, live baits like pinfish, pilchards, finger mullet, and live shrimps work well but cut baits, especially on those slow moving tides, when things get slow, especially cut mullet and ladyfish on the bottom. Artificials, many to talk about, they are plentiful, but I strongly recommend the topwater walk the dog lures in four to six inch sizes, lifelike imitation swim baits, artificial shrimp, but I will tell you, the bait that I've had a lot of opportunity to play with and I'm highly impressed with is that new Berkeley Juke 85 and 100 in the lifelike colors. The 85, in my opinion, is perfect for the southwest region, and there's many different ways you can work that bait. We'll talk about that all throughout the season. Also, with these snook getting ready to come out of their backcountry haunts, spring and summer, I strongly recommend 40 to 60 pound fluorocarbons, especially now we're approaching spring or summer. Their mouths are going to get rough, and their gill plates can easily break you off. And I got a prime example of some nice oversized snook recently caught down in the southern end of the Everglades. Both these snook are both oversized, this is something we have to look forward to as we approach spring and summer. On the inshore side, the redfish. Now the bite in the last couple of weeks has been picking up down in the 10,000 islands from Goodland to Rabbit Key. Fishing areas, plenty of fallen deadwood and stumps, especially from the last two hurricanes that passed through last year, the west coast last summer. I strongly recommend getting in those areas, all these points with submerged logs on higher stages of the tide, with all this debris, all the submerged stuff, you can also use work oyster bar points and oyster bar bottom, popping corks with shrimp, live pilchards, but I strongly recommend with all that debris submerged, you gotta use those top water walk the dog lures. You wanna use the gold, gold weedless spoons along with cut muller or ladyfish in that all debris. There's a nice oversized redfish caught up in the Goodland area by Captain Chris Broom. Now, on the offshore side, I've talked to many captains and they all agree, especially Mike, Captain Mike Avenon out of Naples, you know, the report, this week is the permit release really showed up a couple months ago. They showed up early, but they're concentrating in areas right now from nine to 25 miles out, concentrating on most wrecks and all public reefs are holding fish. Now Captain Mike Avenat says the best part of the day has been the midday combined with a slack tide, especially on those days with light winds and good visibility. Now you wanna approach these fish with stealth, especially if they're on the surface. 20 to 30 pound fluorocarbons, live crabs is gonna be the bait of choice. 
some of these fish can get relatively spooky as they're being pressured. He's telling me seven foot four to seven foot six rods to get those longer casts. And there's a nice picture of a permit recently caught while fishing with Captain Mike Avenon. Ooh. Last species is going to be the red grouper. That bite has really been outstanding, especially on the moderate days from Wiggins Pass to Redfish Pass. Fishing areas are hard bottom. The depths are going to vary. You can fish as close as 65 feet out to 105 feet, but he seems in the last week the 85 to 105 foot area for bigger fish. Now the shallower depth, pad the weed through a lot of fish before getting keepers, but you can still catch them in those areas. Being on the bottom is most important, and a good moving current is also going to be important. Bait's a choice, especially getting it started, according to Cap Mike, is to cut squid, but you can use a different variety of baits, such as herring and sardines. But don't forget live pinfish, also on the weaker tides for more action. But then guys are also saying the bucktail jigs and vert vertical jigs have been working well drifting areas to find fish. There's a nice picture of a red grouper recently caught. Guys, it's great to be back. Really looking forward on doing this all season and actually handing the viewer the most important keep this show going, handing him all the information he needs on a silver platter so he can get good fishing for the weekend. Thank you so much, Midnight. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Serenity Bait Company hotspots from the southwest region. Ronnie says that we're going to go inshore, try largemouth bass, wasn't even part of his report, with the water getting low, targeting local ponds, golf courses, and residential canals. You can lose, use live shiners, prop baits, topwater plugs, five to seven inch worms throughout the entire region, and then offshore, cobias from Indian Pass to Wiggins Pass, fishing wrecks, artificial reefs, the towers, using large live baits and artificial swim baits. Bree is gonna get that job. Done. We're handing it out on a silver platter. Yeah. I love that, Ronnie. All right, next up, we're seeing what the Fish Bites East region is reeling in with Captain Mike Holiday. Holiday, we gonna reel in some snook this weekend or what? We are going to crush those things on yeah, Friday. I'm so excited. You know, it's time for a new season, a bunch of new fish to chase. The April snook fishing is about numbers. You have to weed through all the small fish to get to the legal fish, and the bite is both daytime and nighttime. The best action is around all the inlets and lighted docks along the intercoastal waterway. And at the same time, you can still find some and target some uh, overslot fish in the St. Lucie, the Loxahatchee, and the Herman Rivers. But if you're gonna do that, expect only a couple of bites from the big girls. You're not gonna get a lot of bites like you will chasing those smaller fish. The fish around the inlets are focused on small bait fish being swept along with the tide. So a live pinfish, a sand perch, a pilcher, those will all work. As will a copper juice colored saltwater assassin, four inch sea shad with a quarter ounce jig head. Around the docks, the same lures and baits are gonna work uh, during the daytime. But at nighttime, you wanna scale down to a lighter leader, a live shrimp, or a small bait fish fly. And for those big fish that are upriver, a topwater plug uh, or a live mullet on the seawall at first light is gonna be the way to go. Average snook in my region right now is four to 10 pounds. I do have a photo of a nice fish, Captain Ed Zayak at Jensen Beach sent me. He led his anglers to this nice St. Lucie Inlet, uh, St. Lucie River snook. That fish ate a live mullet off a of seawall. The other bite we got going, Spring is when we see the pompano migrating north through my region. And unlike the fall and winter where you have to make those long casts to reach out to the fish, this time of year, a lot of fish are in the trough close to the beach. So what you want to do is you want to throw one rod out far, one rod close to shore. Whichever fish gets, whatever rod gets the most bites, move the other rod into that area. The fish are constantly on the move, but places like Double Roads and Juneau, uh, Hope Sound Beach has been really good. Tiger Shores, Normandy Beach, Blue Heron Beach, all those areas are producing pompano on a regular basis right now. And sand fleas are almost non-existent. Uh, so the majority of anglers that are out there are using any of the fish bite set patches, the shrimp, the crab, the clam, any of the colors, whatever you can get right now, put them on a double or triple hook pompano rig, wait for the bite. It seems like there's a, a good bite right at dawn and then a steady pick away during the daytime and then another good bite at high tide. Average pompano in my region is going to be like one to three pounds. And I have a photo that's uh, Maverick, group, uh, Maverick Boat Group dealer Kevin Lindsay. He got that nice pompano to eat a pink jig on the Sailfish Point Flats. All right, Mike, let's go ahead and head offshore, bud. Well, April is one of the top kingfish months in my region. And the warm spring has already pushed a decent number of fish into the area. We're not seeing the big schools of fish off Jupiter yet but the fish are spread out along a large area from the offshore bar in Fort Pierce down to the Six Mile Reef, the Loran Ledge, even all the way down towards the Juneau Pier. 
You want to target the kings by slow trolling a live mullet, a thread fin, a filtered, a goggle eye, any of those baits, a blue runner, uh, get a R and R tackle wire kingfish rig, or a uh, triple hook uh, fluorocarb fluorocarbon Palm Beach rig. Both those will work well. You can also pull rig ballyhoo or a swimming mullet, even a rig ribbon fish will work right now if you can get them. Uh, run the boat in a zigzag pattern with a lot of turns. It seems like you get a lot of the bites when the boat is turning. And the average kingfish right now is 10 to 18 pounds. I have a photo of Stuart veterinarian Julia Paulson. She picked up that nice school kingfish slow trolling uh, live thread fin around the kingfish hole in Hope Sound. Uh, that was on a, on a west wind day when they seemed to charge the beach. The other bite going, the mixed bag snapper bite has been strong throughout the region with you know, a lot of lanes, vermilion and mangroves from Fort Pierce to Stewart, and more muttons and yellowtails on the southern end of the region. Uh, anytime we get a good bit of wind and swell like we have this week, it stirs up the bottom, making it difficult for the snapper to see your leader and to find food. And that makes them considerably more aggressive, so you don't have to go with those super long leaders. The lane and vermilion snapper, they seem to be on the shallower reefs and wrecks like the sand pile and the Ernst Reef and the David T. Well, the mangroves and muttons seem, seem to be uh, more common in those deeper wrecks like the Halsey, the Amazon, the six and eight mile reefs, the Loran Ledge, as well as um, some of the wrecks down south. Uh, for baits, squids, pilchards, sardines, cigar minnows, and grunt bugs are going to work on all the snapper. It's such a mixed bag right now. You want to make sure you know the current snapper regulation because you're probably going to load up if you find that good bite. I got a photo of a, a really nice mutton snapper. That's Mike Long. He got that fish in 85 feet of water just south of Fort Pierce, and that fish ate a dead goggle eye on the bottom. Well, we just had the Bassmasters Classic this week, Mike. What about the bass fishing here in Florida? What do you got? Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a shame we wasn't on Okeechobee. You know, we're about a week away from the full moon, which should be the last good spawn of the year. Lake Okeechobee, or last good spawn of spring at least. I was talking to Captain Nathan Schoen of OkeechobeeBassFishing.com. He was telling me the majority of anglers right now are, are locked in on that north side of the lake in the shallow water from Lake Port to Buckhead Ridge. Focus on the peppergrass patches with a watermelon red glitter colored bass assassin little tapper or a vapor shad or even, a, you know, a frog bait like a logger toad. If you can locate the bedding fish, you can crawl a, a, skunk, a skunk ape or punch crawl across the bed and get that protective bite from those big fish. And if it, it gets crowded because it's such a small area, that's where all the boats are. If it gets too crowded, you will find some isolated fish around Cochran's Pass, Tin House Cove, and along the outside points of King's Bar. Most of those are coming on shiners. The fish are in all phases of the spawning mode, pre-spawn, post-spawn, the spawn. So it's time to move around looking for fish. It's a 20 fish morning with the average bass, one to three pounds, but they're catching them to nine pounds right now on Okeechobee. Mike, great report. Thank you so much. Looking forward to our season with you. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots uh, from the East region, the TNH Marine hotspots inshore, Snook on the sea walls of North Fork of the St. Lucie River, Live Mullet, <clears throat> Topwater Plugs at First Light, and then offshore Black Fin Tunas on Push Button Hill at dawn and dusk. And those live goggle eyes and thread fins or sardines will be your best bait. I'm for sure. So excited. Dave's coming with us too this weekend to go catch some snook with nice. Mr. Mike. Should nice. be pretty fun. All right, the Startron Central West region is coming up next. But first, Dave is back at it at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques at the CCA Workbench. Hey. Yeah, we're going to be you chasing ready? snook with some artificials and. Woo. Probably just like it's gonna happen this weekend. Bree, you'd probably outfish me as well. Never. Again. I don't ever. She caught the pompano the last time. Yeah. No, with the permit. Dave. Caught the big permit That's true. last time. Dave, I That's know you true. know how to get jiggy with it. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> the Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick, feel everything. Sirius XM Marine, weather, fish mapping, entertainment. Penn, let the battle begin. Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Shallow Sport, legendary performance. And Daiquiri Deck, food, drinks, friends.
Well, we're here at the CCA workbench and it's time for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques. Dave, one of my favorite things to do is throw lures to a big You snook. know, how can you not like snook? They're a great fish. Everybody loves them. They're good to eat. They're, they're like the dolphin of the inshore. You know, the dolphin, he likes to jump. He's good to eat. He's really pretty. Snook, same thing. You know, yeah. he, he's good to eat. He looks awesome. He jumps around when you hook him. Everybody's excited to catch one. I am always excited to catch one. I don't get to fish enough for him as I'd like. We're starting to get more of them and more of them up, up where I live. You know, when I was a kid in the 80s, we didn't have snook up there. We had several freezes, you know, and, and all the snook in Cape Canaveral and north of there went away. Right. So it was hard for us to even target them so we didn't really much and then you know eventually they've worked their way back up and what we're going to talk about today is targeting them on artificial lures we've talked a lot about uh, using jupiter rigs and other live bait rigs for them catching those big ones in the inlet but this is a little different because not all snook are, are the same you know they come in all different shapes and sizes and those snook that uh, come during the summer in the inlets they're the big breeding females you know they're the bigger ones so we use different stuff for those. You, you, you probably wouldn't want to go out there with your bass rods to catch those, you know, 35 no, to 40 you're, inches, you're 100%, you know. You're 100% right. What you're going to do is you're going to show up with something that's got a lot of meat. Correct. You know, because you're going to be pulling these, you know, if, if you're going to be fishing in an inlet or around a bridge for those great big snook, you're going to need a big rod and reel to pull them out of that current because that's when they're going to bite. Yeah. They're going to bite under when the current's flowing. There ain't a whole lot of biting going on at dead low tide or dead tide, you know. So they like to they like it when that turn, current just turns and starts to go out is the best. Right. And if you get a good outgoing at dawn or dusk, that's even better still. Right. Um, they they will bite at any time of the day, but they bite better at night and at dawn and at dusk. Yeah. And this eight foot Fenwick allows you to throw your bait a long ways, but then you got the horsepower right. from the middle part of the rod. Once you hook one up too. Yeah. That, that's what you're going to need. And you know, you're going to need a big lure like this, one of these sliding lures from r, &R Tackle. Right. You know, these are called a sliding lures because they do this little doodad here. Right. All the weights in this bait. So when the fish eats it and starts slinging it around, it gets far enough away from him that he can't use it as a de-hooking device. And this would be the perfect outfit to fish in an inlet at night, right. around the docks, whatever. Right. Now, but if you're going to be, you know, fishing some of those other docks, you know, during a different time of the year or uh, up on fishing. the flats yeah. and stuff like that, you're going to be fishing for, for snook that aren't as huge but you're going to catch a lot more. Right. You know, you're going to catch a lot of them. So you're going to want to use some of your bass type stuff. 15 to 20 pound braid should be fine. Yeah, that's, what, uh, that's what this is. With 40 to 60 pound monofilament leader, you know, depending on, you know, if you can't get them to bite on 60, you might want to have to go down to 40. And you wouldn't want to go down much more than 40 because they do have some pretty sharp gill rakers on them and uh, gill plates and they can, and they're pretty crafty. Uh, a, a, oh, snook, know. a snook will run to the pole. You know, if he's, if there's a dock or something around, he's going to run to it. Now, as far as some of the baits, when you're talking about catching some of those littler snook up on the flats and in the mangroves and stuff. A lot of times they're eating smaller baits uh, and in little shrimp and crustaceans and whatnot. So you're going to start using, you know, things that'll imitate that. You know, the little sea shads there, an eighth a, ounce to a quarter ounce jig head. Uh, you throw it up on the beach and drag it right in that little surf line where they love to live. Right. And they will, and they will pounce on that. They're, they're going to be sitting in a spot just out of the current where the current's flowing by them and it's bringing stuff by, and then they're gonna rush out and engulf it, and that's how they eat. So that, that's kind of the things that you're gonna want. You're gonna want baits that'll simulate uh, either the shrimp or the bait fish being flushed out with the, with the flood, with the flood tide. Well, speaking of bait fish, so mm -hmm. this Berkeley stick, stick shad, shad correct. tell me that doesn't look like your thread fin that Holiday loves to use. Exactly. Or this juke, which looks like a, you know, a pin fish or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and what's cool about the juke, you know, this, you can fish this one a little bit deeper. It's a heavier bait and can fish deeper. This one has a lip, but it, the lip's not to make it go deeper. The lip on that bait is to make it flash and roll and shine. You're 100% and, correct. And uh, so you can fish this in pretty shallow water and you don't have to worry about bumping it off the bottom if, if the bottom's, you know, sandy and rocky. But if there's a lot of weeds and stuff, you can still keep that, that juke up off the bottom. You know, just pulling it from the top, you know, manipulating the rod. Tip. Right. And maybe, Correct. you know, speeding it up a little bit. Now, Ron Houston, the midnight, his favorite thing to do <laughs> is to throw a rattling type of lipless crankbait like this war pig. Right. Because he can throw it a mile 
and he just it's idiot proof for all of us it and they eat and a lot of things back. eat it too not only snook a lot of other things will pile on that war pig exactly and, and it, again it's good because it's got it's heavy you know it's a heavier bait yeah. and it sinks really fast so you can fish in deep deep water with it all right top water you're the man my, my favorite thing to fish with either you know up in the river with my buddy dingo or you know any place where i know that there are snook i'll be the guy who catches one to your ten but all mine are going to be on top water plugs because i just like watching them just explode on a top water plug that, that really is it's what gets me going i don't even care if they eat it if they knock it up if they knock it in the air six feet that you know that's just as good as a catch to me i'll i'll squeal like a little like a little girl. So the white, the, the walk the dog, do you like three hooks or two hooks? The 120 or the 100, Dave? Um, it, it, it depends on where I'm at. If, the, if I'm catching great big ones, I'll use the bigger bait. You know, yeah. if, they're, if, if they're great big ones in there, then that's what I'm after, and I'll, I'll try to use the bigger bait, you know. But, you know, it's, it's fun to watch them engulf a little small one, too. Guys, that's a great point. If you ever want to catch a big fish, you can eliminate a small fish bite by going bigger. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you that when it comes to offshore fishing as well. Yep, you put true. a big bait out to catch that blue one, you're going to eliminate those 30-pound mahi That's from right. eating it. That's right. right Gentlemen, Bree? Dave, that just happened to me when I was fishing with Ronnie Houston. A snook just kicked my top water six feet into the air. I squealed like a little girl. <laughs> exactly. Like a little girl that I am. I would make that <laughs> same was, sound. It was so exciting. I didn't even catch the fish, but it was just, it got me going. All right, let's welcome back our resident Startron Central West Region Captain, Jeff Page. Let's hear it, Page. Proud to be back, too, in the Startron Central West Region on the Florida Inside of Fishing Report. And you know what? In our region, we may not have as Biggest snook is Mike Holiday has in his, because both of my biggest snook have come from Hollywood region. But we make up for that with good numbers and good numbers of quality fish in that slot range from 28 to 32 inches. And I believe a lot of that's to good management from everybody, from the anglers right on up to FWC. And you know, this time of year, a lot of the fish have pushed out of the back country, out of the back canals, back bays, rivers, creeks, what have you, and they're all out in the main bays now, which are right just inside from the inlets and the Gulf of Mexico, and some of the fish are even in the passes now. We're at 80 degree water, and the fish are really gorging on pilchards, on smaller pinfish, and y'all were talking about a topwater bite. You know, they like to hold around oyster bars, sand bars, uh, big lumps of grass, but the problem is if the tide's not high enough, they're going to fall out off the edges. And that can be just where it's two feet deeper, maybe a big pothole, and that's where you want to catch them when that tide's down. But this time of year, if you study your tide chart, you get up around that 2.0, even down to a 1.8, but on up into over two foot, we're going to have some really good snook fishing on top of areas that these fish haven't been able to get to all winter because it just hasn't been high and the tides are finally getting that high. Now you can use live pilchards um, or you, if you like throwing lures like you guys were talking about in my region, the top water like the Berkeley Jaywalker 120 is awesome, but I've been doing really good, Rick, with the 90 and the 110 Berkeley stick shad in that chrome pattern. So you want to get a big snook, you fish around the bridges and inlets like the Venice Jetty, like the Anna Maria Fishing Pier. Even the uh, Longboat Pass Inlet can be really good for big snook. And the cool thing about all those places is you don't have to have a boat, but you do want a way to keep baits alive. I heard Dave mention the bigger fish on the live baits, of course. Uh, he'd rather get them on the top water. But like a big live silver mullet, big pinfish, big grunts, big ladyfish. And if you can keep them alive, your boat live well, yes. But if you're on land, there's guys that have pretty good little portable live well systems that they bring in the back of their pickup truck. Now, as we get into the hotter months, look for the fish out along the beaches around any down structure, trees, rocks, what have you. Same bait supply, live, live pilchards. You can even get them on three line live shrimp. The last time of the year is in the fall when we have the real big high tides and look for the fish to push up under the mangroves and you can skip chunks of bait like ladyfish or pinfish. They'll sometimes outfish live bait. And then you want to use at least 30 pound leader. And that works down in Bull and Turtle Wet Bay, as well as up in Sarasota Bay, Pomasola, Terracea, 
anywhere there's big areas of mangrove, you're going to be able to play that. I've got a couple snook photos tonight. The first one with a happy client with the Manatee River master himself, Captain Griffin Dean. And then my second photo is of a nice snook that my good friend from over on the Hollywood side, but he came over and fished with me. That's the real Captain Monty Peters right there. He used to fish redfish tournaments with us, Rick, back in the day. I remember. Tell me what about the, shri uh, about the trout, bub. Speckled trout. We had a really good wintertime trout bite. The fish are starting to really stay together, but they're dropping out off the deeper grasses. They're not up in the back mud holes and places they were in the winter. Down in Charlotte Harbor on the outside edges of Bull and Turtle Bay, as well as Kayapalua Island. And you just look for that spotted grass, and sometimes it's not even grass growing out of the ground, it's just moss grass. And you can work, I like using heavier heads, Rick, three eighths, quarter ounce, and dragging it along the clean sand edges. And we've been getting trout up to 22 inches in Sarasota Bay, as well as out front of Rattlesnake Key. Now, if you don't like throwing it that way, you can put them underneath a popping cork and throw that out in three to six feet of water. And you know what they say, poppy down. I've got two trout photos tonight. One of a good uh, star bright, star tron bass master, Patrick Pierce, that came and fished with me not too long ago. Probably the biggest trout he's ever caught. And then my, uh, my longtime friend, Brad Willie Wilson of the CS to Key Fish Market, with definitely the biggest trout he's ever caught. Going right. offshore permit fishing, Rick, we've had a lot of warm up. Water's 80 degrees, and the permits are doing real well. Three, seven, and 11 miles on the artificial reefs. 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon leader, free line crab, and if it's a little windy, put a small split shot a few inches just above your crab. And you know what's nice is having that spot lock on your road and trolling motor that you can just stop, maybe jog over a little left, a little right, and you can really work an area quick without having to anchor up. Got a happy a picture tonight of a happy crew with 90 year old longtime client Ed. I don't know his last name. But he's been fishing with Jason Stock forever on the full sand. And my last species, Red Grouper, Captain Tim No, along with the boys out of Cortez from Double Trouble, have all been limiting out on Red Groupers in 90 to 110 feet of water over hard bottom areas off Anna Maria, south of Venice. And they've just been looking for small areas of hard bottom and a lot of times live pinfish as well as the frozen sardines. All right, Jeffrey. And that's it. Great report, bud. Thank you so much from the StarTron Central West region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Daiquiri Deck hotspots. He says that inshore, snook fishing is good around the oyster bars on the higher stages of the tide in Terracea, Pomasola, and North Sarasota Bay. Live pilchards or Berkeley stick shads in chrome pattern are getting the job done. And then if you guys want to go offshore, the permit in this mild winter are showing up in three to seven miles out on the artificial reefs off of Anna Maria live free line pass crabs or on the choppy days add a split shot for a, a few inches above your hook to keep those crabs down well rick speaking of daiquiri deck y'all yes. have to join rick dave and i on our daiquiri deck tour april 20th from 5 to 8 in anna maria island and april 21st from 5 to 8 in venice we'll have tons of specials laughs and fish stories for you of course so come on and have some fun with us i can't wait we have some captains joining us as well. Yes, we so got Ronnie a... and Jeffrey, maybe mm -hmm. even get Hag will show up. Oh, I'm sure he'll show up for some daiquiris. Yes, ma'am. Manny's, Petties, and daiquiris, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's excited. All right, the Yanmar ASB Keys and Discover Crystal River Northwest region captains are ready to get back in the swing of things, so sit tight and we'll be right back on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Nice. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Berkeley, Your Fish, Our Science, Bahio Sunglasses, Blue Light Blocking, Radically Clear Lenses, Sea Sucker, Easy On, Easy Off, Incredibly Strong, Blue Water Outriggers, Everything for Your Outdoor Adventure, Kubota, Together We Do More. And Yanmar ASV, a leader in compact equipment. Welcome back. We're going to head on down to Paradise and welcome back our Yanmar ASV Keys region captain, Sarah Stanzik. Tell us how the fishing's been, Sarah. Hey, how's it going, you guys? Going well. Really good. Good to have you back. 
Yeah, I know. I can't believe that that was a short season that we were done. Or it was long. It depends on who you ask, I guess. But I thought it was short. Short. It's <laughs> because so you are traveling all over the place, girl. Yeah, I, I actually, we're a big... Uh, supporters of the CCA so I bid on a CCA auction with my friend and we all went to Argentina to do the dove shooting trip so that was really fun so another CCA banquet strikes again <laughs> <laughs> I love to hear it all right tell us about snook in your Florida Keys region snook in the Keys are most prevalent in the backcountry waters of Everglades National Park although we do catch a few resident fish closer to home in Alamorado they really love structures so mangrove islands jetties, down trees, any kind of place like that is or would be the best places to look for them. But they'll also hide around those little white potholes in the shallow water up in the park. Uh, we like to use pilchards or the preferred bait when the water's warmer, but shrimp work well when it's like 70 degrees or under. A pinfish will also catch like your occasional whopper snook, but those smaller baits tend to get more action than a bigger pinfish. So uh, we use like a pen Finfisher 3500 with a medium light action rod, 20 pound braid, and a couple feet of like 30 pound mono or fluorocarbon leader. A 3 0 hook or, or will work for the bigger baits and a 2 0 for the smaller baits. And you can either free line it or just with a very small split shot a few inches up from the bait, depending on the current. So it's a pretty easy setup. You'll definitely know when a snook hits your bait. They have a really good bite. They're predators. They, they're strong. They're really fun to fight. A lot of them jump out of the water and air out. They shake their heads and feel it. And here's a big, nice snook a picture with Papa Richard Sanzik and the Laney who works at the marina. He took the Man. staff fishing one day. So big, nice snook she caught. Richard oh. always catches some big old fish. All right, yep, what else you got yeah. in short, <laughs> Sarah? Also inshore, mango snapper, now that the bay waters are, you know, inshore waters are starting to warm up now. Winter's officially over. We're done with all those, you know, strong cold fronts coming through. Still have a few weak ones, maybe, but just the water's not going to get cold anymore. So the snappers like the warmer water. Some they're really fun to f a fun fish to bend the rod on for kids and families. Bonus, they're just excellent to eat. One of my personal favorites. I love mangrove snappers. So good, white flaky meat. A really easy tackle setup too. Just 20 pound leader with a quarter ounce jig head and like a live shrimp, and that's all you need to have. be hooked up into mangroves all day long. Oh, here's a cute picture of this little girl. Who is that? My daughter. Oh. <laughs> with her first, one of her first little mangroves she caught, caught and released at the marina the other day. And that's so the cute. only <laughs> girl that can catch a dock snapper. I'm going to tell you that. She got yeah. a little honey hole. We don't hole. condone fishing at Bud and Mary's, everyone. So ignore the, ignore the location. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go offshore. Offshore, the king mackerel bite has been good. We're still kind of, you know, in between seasons, but there's been a lot of mackerel around. We use live bait like cigar minnows, ballyhoos, and pilchards to target them. Tide fishing is a fun way to, you know, target them too, but you can also slow troll a bait or just use jigs. Light wire, you gotta have wire leader, of course, if you wanna hopefully land one, but uh, number two or four treble hook would be a good setup for, you know, trolling and whatnot. They put up a good fight, and as for eating them, a lot of people like to throw them on the smoker and they get turned into a really, really good smoked fish dip, so that's my favorite way to eat them. And here's a nice sunset mackerel photo with me and my one friend who loves catching king mackerel and smoking them, Frank the Tank. Nice. All right, one more to go. What do you got for us this week, Sarah? And permit. We caught a couple recently. It's just starting to warm up, so I'm just going to mention them now, but we're really going to, in the next month, you know, get into our best season for, for the permit fishing offshore, especially. They really start to like come up on the reef and the wrecks and they spawn. So they'll come, they'll all big group of them will come up to the surface and roll around. And they're really fun to target that way when they're on the wrecks. You can use a live crab, uh, pin 5500 with a 10 foot leader, 30 pound fluoro, and a half ounce jig head. Just put that little jig head right through the side of the crab. Be ready to cast, kind of just you know, mosey around the wrecks and the stuff and look for the big schools of them coming to the surface, shining and flashing, and then you just cast your crab kind of ahead of them and hopefully they'll swim into it. That's really fun. I mean, they when you catch them that way on the wrecks, it's a game on. Is there a big, big permit usually offshore? Like minimum size would be like 20 pounds. It would be a small one. So they pull really hard, make good runs, really fun to catch, and they're really sought after sport fish here in the Keys. Here's a photo of just a happy client last week on one of our charter boats big smile aboard the B&M out of Bud Mary. All right. Good well, day. thank you for a great report. Looking forward to the 
rest of the season working with you and tell everybody in the Keys we said hello. It's time to take a look at the shallow sport hot spots from the Florida Keys. She says inshore tarpon are getting into the best season now as the inshore waters are starting to warm up. You want to use live crabs or a mullet and look for the water movement near the bridges and the channels. And then offshore, blackfin tuna bite has been hot on the artificial humps. Make sure that you have good live bait like a big pilchard to target those bigger fish. You know, it's been a while since we talked about it, but here are the upcoming tournaments happening in the Florida Keys. Tell me. Tell you. First up is the Key West Fishing Tournament, which is an eight month long tournament and goes on through July. It's open to everyone, whether you're fishing from a boat, land or bridge, fishing for 46 species while anglers compete for awards and bragging rights, of course. And then next up is the second annual Marathon Premier Sailfish Tournament, which raises funds for F Mission Fishing, a group that provides fun fishing experiences for youngsters with special needs and their families. Next up, 20 teams fish in remote areas of the Everglades in the annual Herman Lucerne Memorial Tarpon Cup in honor of the man known as Mr. Everglades, April 23rd through the 26th in Isla Morada. And lastly is the Faro Blanco Invitational Tarpon Tournament, which allows anglers to fish three nights with three different captains at three different bridges in the Keys. The tournament raises money for the Ronald McDonald House. So there you have it. For more information on Keys tournaments, visit flakeys.com. That's right. That's right. The Discover Crystal River Northwest region is back with Captain Jeff Hageman. So let's say hi and see what the weekend holds in store for us. Hello, Hag. Hello, it's good to be back. I missed you guys. We missed, missed you, too. you too, bud. Let's get right into it. Snook can be found through the lower half of my region. Uh, Cedar Key is about as north as you can get out there and target them. There are some fish that are being caught a little north of that, but south of that, we got plenty of them. Snook are very tidal. They like moving water, water flow. They like to sit in place where they got a constant supply of food going by them, and that water brings it to them on that incoming outgoing water. So keep that in mind when fishing for them. Fish points, creek mouths, river mouths, sandbars, passes, any structures like jetties, piers, docks, bridges, and rock piles will also hold a lot of snook in my region. As far as baits go, shrimp, sardines, pinfish, and grunts are some of the favorites. And as far as artificial goes, uh, big lip lures, jerk baits, walk the dog type lures, and a sardine or a mullet imitation works best on our coast. Snook also have great eyesight, and they do have gill rakers, so watch your hands when handling them, and they can also slice through fluorocarbon leader. Um, so 25 to 40 pound fluorocarbon leader. I've been using circle hooks, trocar circle hooks lately, and live bait, when I'm live bait fishing, and I can seem to get away with a little bit more less leader because I can get them hooked right in the corner of the mouth and get away from that abrasive mouth they have in those gill rakers. Uh, we do a lot of chumming on our coast too, so toss out some live sardines to get them going with a chum bat, toss out some freebies to get them in a frenzy, and it'll help, it'll help you find and locate them down the shoreline. So as that tide is carrying those baits down there, you might find a couple of extra fish down the shoreline that you can go target when they start popping. And I've got a photo here from Captain Jenny Huddleston of a snook he caught this week. Well, that's a nice, nice. one, bub. All right, well, let's keep rolling. What do you got? I inshore a redfish bite. I'm gonna start down south and go up north Captain Jimmy Pollard of Big Daddy Sport Fishing Charters out of Tampa Bay. Of course, the redfish bite has really fired off right now. Uh, he's fishing tree lines right now that have oyster bars and variations in depth underneath the oyster or underneath the mangroves. White bait and larger Spanish sardines rigged on a two-out circle hook with two to three feet of 25-pound fluorocarbon leader is his go-to setup. Moving up the coast a little bit, Captain Jimmy Huddleston of CaptainHud.com reports out of Ozona Fish Camp that the spring redfish bite has pushed in and begun in St. Joseph Sound. Uh, on the lower tides, he's using gold spoons and working those through the mullet schools and catching plenty. As the tide comes up and gets high, if most of the redfish are going underneath bushes and feeding deep underneath the trees. He's turning the cut bait when that happens, using pinfish and thread fins, cut up and pitched up like right there on the shadow line of the mangroves and pulling those fish under there. He's looking for populations of mullet hanging in the nose mangroves and those redfish will be in there with them. Moving up the coast even more, Captain Mario Costello of Teletales Charters fishing out of the Ozella Keys Marina reports a good redfish bite right now around the mangrove islands and keys from Crystal River to Homosassa. 
He's working the mangrove islands that have mangrove, uh, mullet schools working his points too, and overhanging mangrove branches. I uh, use a live select shrimp free line on a four out circle hook in the middle of the incoming tide. Uh, right now, the water's really clear up there. He says the fluorocarbon leader is very critical. He's going down to 12 or 15 to get some of the bites there because the water's been so clear. And right now, his fish are ranging anywhere from 20 to 32 inches. And a new captain this year. I'm glad to have Captain Lee Thompson from Shallow Seas Charters out of Fort St. Joe and Cape Sandblast. Thank you for the report. His redfish bite right now has been really skinny up close to the shoreline, and he said sight fishing has been producing the best, excuse me, the best pe technique to catch him right now. He's using pearl white flukes and pearl white petal tails to produce his bites. And I've got a couple photos from our captains of a couple nice redfish. Nice photos there, Hag. We're gonna go ahead and take a look. Pretty. Uh, what else you got for us now? Go offshore, bub. Offshore, Captain Rob Davenport at Big Nasty Charters out of St. Pete reports the red grouper bite has been really consistent in 140 to 150. Uh, bottom rig with 60 to 80 pound fluorocarbon leader, 68 to 8 hook. He's using thread fin tipped with squid, has been his bait of choice. He says live bait's been working a little bit too, and the bite has been really good when he's the wind has allowed him to get out there. We've had all this wind lately. So if you can punch out there and get out to that deeper water, it's time to go. Also offshore, Captain Jimmy Pollard of Big, Na Big Daddy Sport Fishing Charters reports a good African pompano bite right now in 120 feet, or, feet of water over natural springs and hard bottom. He's vertically butterfly jigging these fish up. And I've got a photo here from Kathy, Captain Ray Culvert with his wife Morgan with a great AP. Boy, that is a nice African oh, bub. beautiful. Thank you so much, great report. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Ozella Key Marina. Hot spots from the northwest region. He says inshore, the redfish on the top of the tide cut ladyfish and live sardines and pinfish have been working well. And then offshore, yeah, grouper bite has been consistent 90 to 250 feet of water over rock piles and ledges. Those pinfish on a standard bottom rig is going to be the bait of choice breed. Some nice fish coming out of Man. Jeff Hagman's region. Woohoo! Yep. Go fishing this weekend, guys. All right, CCA Star is back in better than ever, and catching a snook this summer could win you a new boat in the CCA Florida Star Competition presented by Yamaha. The snook division of Star offers prizes in six places with a new boat for first place. Star begins Memorial Day weekend and is only $80 to register for 100 days of fishing, and you can win a share of $500,000 in prizes and scholarships. So head to CCAFLstar.com for more information and of course to get registered. All right, the Dynapack Southeast region captain is next in line to give his report, but first Dave Farrell is back at the workbench for Taco Marine new products. Yes, Dave. I am. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some deep drop rig here, one of our new products. You guys, I know you guys are going out deeper and deeper to get those tile fish and whatnot. That'll this is do a the cool trick. thing to do it. Yeah. That'll do it. Let's roll. We'll be back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Penn, let the battle begin. Alta Equipment Company, where uptime matters. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Discover Crystal River, Florida. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. Best Lures, period. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. Well, we're here at the CCA workbench and it's time to troll the edge with Taco Marine. Dave, we're talking about new products. We will be. For 26 weeks, guys, yeah, so don't miss it. <laughs> I, I keep telling those guys, you gotta get that stuff in here, man. Yeah, man. We gotta get it on here. Anyway, next, first off, we're gonna start with first new product of the whole year. We got the Game On XO Jig, the Skeleton Jig. And these are little metal jigs with a like a plastic skeleton, an XO skeleton, as yeah. it were, over the outside. Really shiny, indestructible. They come in three different sizes, a, a little two and a half, a three, and a four inch. 
in a three quarter, a one ounce, and a one point five ounce. So you know they got you covered. You can either get you down. Yeah, you can either cast them or you know jig them straight up and down. Uh, they come in seven different colors, uh, shatter resistant, so you can bounce them off the seawall. You don't have to worry about them. And they've got uh, the four X hooks on there. So go to Game On lures.com to get you some of those exoskeletons all right speaking of other lures next we got the tournament K i mean oh, that's not it the berkeley juke yeah the juke saltwater 85 uh this thing swims three to six feet under the water depending on what you're doing with it but a lot depends on what you're doing it with, with it because this thing is very versatile you can just straight crank it back you can twitch it you can jig it you can troll it if you wanted to it's just a very versatile bait uh that 85 mm means it's 3.3 inches long and uh, it's got that coffin shaped bill in the front to give it a really uh enticing rollover wiggle right you when know? it does the twitch it does that roll like this right and then if you can do the two twitches you know i like to twitch twitch with a pause and it'll give you a full 180 degree if you give it enough slack yeah 180 degree walk the dog underwater Underwater. Right. And it's got the three, three X, uh, sh sticky, sharp fusion treble hooks. Too. Fusion 19s right. ready to go. Right. And it comes in 14 different color combinations. Yes, it so do. So if you've got a color you like, you'll find one of them. I'm it's sure. a Ricky Diggy go to man. <laughs> 14. For sure. Get that Berkeley juke saltwater 85. Next right. we have, uh, this is the deep top. Uh, yeah. Deep okay. drop spreader, spreader rig, uh, <laughs> spreader. Made out of 332nd titanium bar. Uh, a lot of spreader bars are made out of really heavy mono, but even them, even they can get tangled up. This thing's not going to tangle up. They do all these bends in the house uh, with their own bending machines. Like I said, that's titanium, and uh, they're swedged with extra heavy uh, uh, swedges that are made from brass sleeves, so nothing's going to come apart. Uh, the swivels are AFW mini swivels and, that are rated for uh, 170 pounds. Uh, it's just you know easy to change the hooks because all the hooks are on the swivels as well. Right. So you can go up or down in hooks as, if you want. It looks like the big Circle C uh, Eagle Claw. Yeah, it looks like an extra heavy duty one. I love the fact that look how it folds up it and folds you can up. put it away, Dave. Yeah. So you would attach your big heavy weight to this. Correct. And just drop it to the bottom. Catch you those tile fish or those big snappers. Where do we go to find this? Tournamentcable.com. Very nice. Now, I know a little bit about this company. Yeah, this is the Bahios. These are the toads. They're named after those big redfish that we try to catch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the bio-based nylon frame. These are a large fit glasses, uh, eight base curves, so they wrap around pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, little narrow temples, so, you know, yeah. you, you know, uh, uh, Ergo vented pads on the nose. Correct. So, you know, you can, uh, they're, they breathe. They stay, will stay there, but they still breathe. You can get them in glass or polycarbonate lenses. And they do have, uh, if you have a prescription, you can get them in those as well. So why don't you talk a little bit about the hinges? Well, they, they got the hinges that, that go swivel. You know, you, they won't break. They yeah. won't break. The two-way flex hinge. And, you know, with the blue light technology, removing all the blue light. Which is one of the most important things people don't know. That blue light's what really messes you up. And you know what else? What? A standalone warranty like no other sunglass company. You mess call them up, you give them a call. You call somebody and they answer and tell you how to proceed. Bahio.com. Speaking of proceed, Bri, can, let's roll. I can tell you those hinges work because my son always grabs my glasses <laughs> and rips them sideways and they've never broken. I'm over here into the weekend catching snook on my Pathfinder and we're casting into the Dynapack Southeast region with Captain Jimbo Thomas who is ready to give us the fish catching goods. We've missed you Jimbo. Hey Bree, Rick and Dave. You know snook fishing is an addiction and I'm definitely addicted. Now they can be found in just about every body of water in the Southeast region. All of the inlets hold big snook. They can also be found around rock jetties, beaches, around the bridges of the ICW all the lit docks, piers, mangrove creeks, and shorelines, and even in most of the freshwater lakes and canals of the region. Now, the fishing methods and the tackle vary depending on the depth of the water, the amount of current, and also the type of structure. And for most snook fishing applications, a light to medium pin, spin, or casting outfit with 10 to 30 pound tests, you wanna use 30 to 50 pound fluorocarbon leader, that'll get those snook. 
r and tackle flare hawk jigs, also bass assassin jig heads with live shrimp or rubber tails. Those are favorites, along with swimming and surface lures of all types uh, and also all types of live baits. But when you're using live baits, you want to be sure to use some circle hooks. Now, there's been some nice slot and over slot fish caught fishing the shadow lines of the bridges of the ICW from Boca Inlet north to Lake Worth Inlet. The best fishing has been on the top of the incoming tide. Live mullet have been the best bait, as well as live shrimp and topwater lures. And then the inlet and spillway canals have also been productive fishing with live baits in the evenings and early mornings on the last of the incoming tide in the first two hours of the outgoing tide. Now I got a photo here. This is Jane Thomas with an oversized Biscayne Bay snook that ate a live pilcher. Nice. So that was quite a nice one, yes. Oh, that was Jane. supposed to be my fish. She grabbed my fishing rod. She yes, always sir. does. She's been grabbing your fishing rod for 30 years. <laughs> Hi, right, Bub, tell us Sounds about good. the tarpon. <laughs> so the tarpon fishing remains good in the, in most of the inlets and their adjacent beaches and also around the lip bridges of the ICW. The best bite's going to be in the early mornings and late afternoons and evenings on both the incoming and outgoing tide. You just want that water moving, so it doesn't matter which way it's going. Beta choice right now is a big live shrimp, crab, or live mullet. You want to drift them through the shadow lines using 6-0 to 7 hooks and 80-pound mono leader. Also look for fish rolling or marks on your fish finder on both the north and south sides of your local inlet. You want to get out of the boat traffic on the side. And then the fish have been in the 60 to 100 pound range. Now moving offshore, sailfish have been coming through in fairly decent numbers. There's been a few double digit catches made in the last week, mainly, mainly because the fishing conditions have been good. We've had some blue water and north current along the edge of the Gulf Stream, but those conditions can and will change overnight. So each day we get out there, we decide which way to go. Now the best fishing has been in 100 to 250 feet of water. You want to use live bait, herrings, goggle eyes, sardines, or top baits. Fish them under the kite. And if you don't have enough one for the kite, you can try slow trolling or drifting those live baits. Also, with it, if it's calm, keep an eye out for any free jumping sails. If you can get lined up for, with them, get some baits in front of them, good chance of getting a bite there. And then we're also starting to see some decent kingfish. A lot of the kings are being caught trolling. You want to use three and a half drone spoons or pink sea witch with a bonita strip combo. Fish it behind a planer or a wire line outfit in 80 to 150 feet of water. But the bigger kings, they are being caught on live baits. A lot of the bites have been on our kite baits. So we've been adding a little piece of wire leader to avoid any cutoffs. Uh, number four or five uh, wire leader will work. And the wire doesn't really have much effect on our sailfish bites. So if you're sail fishing, it doesn't make much of a difference. But the really big kings have been caught on big live baits like a blue runner or a speedo. You want to double hook that bait and then free line it behind the boat. When you put that bait out, some of those baits like to stay on the surface and some of them like to go down deep. Those baits that swim down deep, those are the ones that are getting bit by those big kings. Now, I got another photo here, and this is a huge 49-pound king wow. that was caught off government cut aboard the double threat with Captain Ryan Kosurik. Good job there, guys, off the double threat. All right, Jimbo, thank you so much. It's time to take a look at the southeast hotspots. Inshore, he says, drift live shrimp, crabs, and mullet through your local inlet for evening tarpon bite. And then offshore, drift or kite fish, Baits in 80 to 200 feet of water for a mixed bag of sailfish, kingfish, and blackfin tunas, guys. Okay, Floridians, I don't know if you've noticed our new artwork here, but it's time to show your support for Florida's fisheries with a Conserve Florida Fisheries license plate. For just $25, proceeds for the redfish tag support protecting and enhancing Florida's saltwater marine resources, habitat restoration, water quality, and coastal environmental education. Get this beautiful addition at your local DMV or visit redfishtag.com for more information. I know I'm getting one. This is stunning. And yeah, it goes absolutely. You know, Bree, the other thing that CCA's done that's really I'm excited about is we've released 
over 220,000 redfish that were born in the hatchery up in Crystal River. We have both east and west coast DNA strains of fish, so they were releasing them on both coasts. How cool is that? Go CCA, always doing amazing things for our state. All right, the real legends Central East and Sea Sucker Panhandle regions are getting our weekend fishing agenda in order, so stay hooked. And we'll be right back. And remember to keep up with everything fishing in Florida. Make sure to head on over to our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and to see new fishing adventures along with our reports. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy. We'll see you soon. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron. Berkeley, your fish, our science. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 35 years. Tin Cup, Mountain Whiskey, the Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing, book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com and Strike Zone Fishing. All right, let's welcome back the Real Legends Central East region with Captain Jim Ross at the helm. Are you ready to start the season, Jim? By the way, it was good to see you the other day coming back from the Fish Bites trading post, as always. It was very good. It was very good to see you and to meet your sister. That was awesome. And I tell you what, Brian Rick, it's great to be back. I look forward to another fantastic season trying to get all the guys and gals in the Central East region out there and hooked up. And snook is one of the species that you can definitely target I have had multiple people on my boat get personal bests this year uh, already, and it's, we're really just coming into spring. Uh, I've talked with tons of guys who are just tearing the fish up, especially down around the inlets at the Ponce, Canaveral, and you know the, the one that we all always think of when we think of snook in my region is Sebastian. Flare hawk jigs down there, those R&R &R flare hawks are tearing the fish up on the incoming, or on the outgoing tide, and on the incoming tide, guys are using swim baits. But, you know, whether you fish the inlets or if you fish the backwaters, there's a couple things that you really need to have. And one of those things is a good piece of equipment called a reel. And I've been using the new Pin Battle 3 reels for my smaller fish, my, oh, you know, fish up to about 10 pounds. And then when I get out to the inlets, uh, I've been using some of the Slammer DXs. And the, I really like the DX in both the Battle and in the Slammer because they've got CNC cut gears. They're just really, really solidly built reels. Been real happy with them. So if you guys and gals are out there looking for a new saltwater reel, you might want to check out the, either, of those, either of those particular models. But I'll tell you, in the backwaters right now, especially through the end of the Banana River Lagoons, we have got a bunch of glass minnows running around in those backwaters, especially in the mouths of some of the canals, residential canals and creeks. And that is where you're going to find some pretty surprising sized snook. You know, you might think, oh, I'll get one up to 20, 22, maybe 24 inches. There are some fish that are pushing 37 and 38 inches in some of these creek mouths. So don't go in there under gun. Make sure that you've got something big enough that you can actually get those fish out from under those docks, mangroves, around those bridge pilings, whatever it happens to be. Most of our fish right now are running 24 to 34 inches. But like I said, we've got some really, really big ones. I've got a couple of photos here. Uh, first one is of a typical, uh, you know, beach snook. That fish, we were actually found a school of fish that was feeding on bait fish along the shoreline as we were running up and down the beach. Started throwing some live baits in there and of course got a couple of those fish. And the second one, once in a while, I actually get to catch one too. And this happened to be right in front of Jetty Park. So you guys can actually go down to Jetty Park and fish right from the beach there or fish from the Canaveral Pier and catch snook all around that area. Now my second species right now is black drum and black drum have probably been the best overall bite no matter where you happen to be fishing in the intracoastal well in state waters let's put it that way i'm talking with guys that are fishing off of the ponce inlet inshore jetties or inshore reefs uh, within two to three miles of the beach they're catching black drum the guys at the inlets catching black drum the guys in the flats down in sebastian and vero and all the way up through the mosquito lagoon catching black drum so if you're looking for some really, really good solid action, black drum happen to be it right now. Now they're really easy to target. Cut crab is probably the number one thing to use with them. You can put that on a jig head or a little slide and sinker rig or a knocker rig. Or for those fish that are hanging out underneath the mangroves, they seem to prefer a shrimp either on a real light jig head or on a, on a, a little split shot circle hook rig. And those fish are running upwards of 
you know, four to four to eight pounds. Every once in a while, you'll get one that's 10. Um, but we have got fish in the region right now that are going up to 60, 65 pounds. I've got a picture of one here. Uh, I took Barbara out for her 82nd birthday. Barbara. And she put this thing to the boat. Now, here's what she caught it on. Check this out. A one quarter ounce bass assassin Buddha style jig head. And it's the, the Buddha style jig head is the one that I really, really like in conjunction with live baits because the baits don't foul on the jig head. But she caught that one with me on a recent trip right outside Port Canaveral on a, on a live shrimp. So you never know what's gonna bite and elephants eat peanuts, as they say. Absolutely. Happy birthday, Barbara. Let's roll, <laughs> let's roll offshore, bub. Now swinging offshore, I'll tell you, the lane snapper bite has been better this year than I believe I may have ever seen. The lane snapper, <clears throat> like the black drum and the snook, have been pretty much everywhere. Uh, one of our captains at Port Canaveral, uh, Steve Knowles, got the uh, the other day got a really nice one inside of Port Canaveral. That was and actually it was a legal fish to keep, uh, right at around three pounds. It was a big fish uh, out on the reefs from Sebastian Vero. Uh, you start in short about the 40 foot mark and you go out to the 80 and 90 foot mark and go up through the Canaveral area. Lots of lane snapper in those areas. When you get a little farther to the north, they've they've slacked off just a little bit from around the Ponce Inlet area, but those southern the southern part of my region is still very, very strong with the lane snapper right now. They've been real easy to catch cut baits or jumbo live shrimp happen to be, you know, some of the best things that you can drop down to them, put them on a, you know, enough weight to, to hold the bottom. And they're not real fussy like mutton, so you don't have to use a super long leader to catch uh, the lane snapper. Now, the other uh, spe fish species that I have right now is triple tail. We're coming, to the end of our triple tail action in in my region we had a really good run this this spring uh some of the fish have been upwards of 20 pounds most of our average fish are eight to ten pounds live shrimp on a jig head or free line live shrimp around any kind of floating debris or structure even inside the lagoon systems you can catch them around channel markers and different things like that throughout the entire intracoastal system all you have to do is just uh you know, if you've got good water quality and decent amounts of bait in the area, we've had a really good shrimp run this year. And so those fish are hanging around channel markers and you'll find them in as shallow as five feet of water. But one of the other things I wanted to mention real quick before we go, oh, I've got a, I've got a, a photo here of a triple tail. Um, this is a pretty decent one that we caught uh, here uh, right outside of Canaveral on some floating debris. Yum. But one last thing I wanted to mention was we have got water temps right now in the 70 to 73 degree range. And where you find those water temps, you can find cobia. Now, we've had a really slow cobia year so far, but the, the setup for this week in particular looks like it could be really, really good for cobia. So if you start seeing manta rays and those sorts of things, don't be afraid. I, I know that's a fifth species and we don't have any video, but I want to let the guys and gals out there know that it could happen. It could blow up any day. So just be aware of that whenever you guys and gals get out there this week. All right, bub. If we don't go, you're going to get blown up by the producer, Nicole. So I better go. Hey, let's check, it, check out the Rodan Marine Systems hotspots from the Central East region inshore. The area inlets of the mixed bag with snook, redfish, jacks, pompano, black drum used live shrimp on an assassin. Booyah jig head. <laughs> Buddha. Buddha, Buya, <laughs> Buma, whatever. Buddha. And then offshore, cobias and lane snappers on the reefs and 60 to 90 feet of water use live or cut pogies rigged on a large jig head are the best bait options. And then look for those cobias following hooked fish, like maybe even a big bull shark up to the surface. But thank you for the cobia tips, Jim. We appreciate yeah. it. We're checking in with the sea sucker panhandle region. Get it five. Captain Pat Deneen. Captain Pat, where have you been? Yeah. I have been traveling across the seas, but I'm home now, so that's good. Woo. All right. Tell us what's happening, hey, Patar. Yeah, Rick, snook are not targeted in our area. I mean, there's some are caught, but not enough to really, you know, mention or even, you know, consider targeting. However, that now is the time of year to target Cobia, just like Jim was just speaking about. After several years of, uh, of few fish, I'm optimistic that this fishery is rebounding. This past week, some fish were caught from Panama City to Pensacola. Uh, Captain Ronnie Respondek over in Rooster Tail Charters in Pensacola found a nice 46 pounder floating down the bar and several were caught from the pier so you don't need a boat to catch these guys. About this time of year, Kobe will begin migrating east to west along our beaches. This typically occurs until the end of April. Southeast winds push them along the surface so the best fishing is with good sunshine and an east to southeast wind. Uh, lures of choice are going to be large, brightly painted jigs like the Frank Helton Dingalings. 
Um, the number one bait of choice are eels, followed by a variety of fish. Panhandle cobia over 100 pounds have been caught, but the last few years, 60 plus pounders are more than welcome. But I'm hoping that this year uh, is the beginning of a, of a new new uh, generation of cobia fishermen. Um, secondly, offshore, the vermilion snapper. There's no shortage of these guys. Uh, they're also known locally as mango snapper. The fishing for them has been very good. You're going to find them on the wrecks and natural bottom in 80 to 100 50 plus feet of water. They're smaller snapper, most being 14 to 18 inches long, but sometimes they're going to exceed four pounds. Vermilions are primarily targeted with cut bait, either squid or minnows on a one or two hook dropper rig. Use a small one to two watt circle hooks. And while you're trying to catch vermilions, you're going to definitely catch some trigger fish, which are also in season. They're a welcome bycatch. Both are extremely tasty fish and very plentiful right now. So that is one. Two, well, actually, two fishes you go out and, and get some good eating food. Moving inshore, Spanish mackerel are throughout the region. Uh, you're going to find them along the beaches and in the bays, particularly near the inlets. I mean, there's a, a good number of them around right now. Uh, the good folks at Blue Water Outriggers in Fort St. Joe report exceptional fishing in St. Joe Bay right now. The most effective way to catch a mess of Spanish is by trolling. Uh, use a multi hook Christmas tree style rig, you know, where you got three, four, or five uh, straw rigs above a sil small silver spoon as a trailer. Not uncommon to catch two or three at a time. The incoming tide is often the best near the inlets, but in the nearby bay waters, either tide can be good. The Spanish are running, running one to three pounds. And then finally inshore, um, the Panhandle beaches are producing one of the most sought after surf fishes around the Pompano. Uh, Cape Sand Blast all the way to the Alabama line. Schools of fish are moving east to west along the beach. That fishing with multiple surf rods is the primary method of targeting pompano, and the best natural bait is going to be the sand flea. You know, use a pyramid sinker or a Sputnik sinker, which is basically a sinker with a bunch of wires sticking out of it, to hold the sand bottom real well. You know, to keep your bait from rolling along. You know, keep it in place. Uh, and then above the sinker, use a, a two-hook dropper rig. A very small colored float attached by each hook will keep your bait visible and act like an attractant. And then also a piece of fish bite will also give it some color and we'll be eating with her. The, the pompano will eat the fish bite, whether there's a sand flea there or not. But if you lose your sand flea and you got a fish bite, hey, you're still fishing. If you want to go artificial, use chartreuse, pink or green pompano jigs or wacky jigs. And most pompano are running one to three pounds, but some exceeding five pounds have been caught. And I've seen some pictures of some six pounders that have been caught in the last few weeks. So. Pompano fishing is good right now. All right, Patar, way to start us off with the new Sea Sucker Panhandle region. But it is time for the Blue Water Outrigger Hot Spots. He says that inshore, Pompano off of the beach using sand fleas and fish bites. And then if you want to go offshore, guys, Vermilion Snappers in 90 to 110 feet of water using cut bait. He is the Barry White of our show. I'm sorry, but that voice, I've missed it. Yeah. All right, we've got one more report on the horizon in the Northeast region. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Only one more? One more. Where did the time go? Uh, oh. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Island Lures. Tournament Tackle. The IGFA. Every fish, every water, every angler since 1939. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. Fishing for Adventure. Real Legends. Available at bellsflorida.com. Dynapack. Your partner on the road. And Taco Marine. Troll the Edge. Dan Benson here from Powerful Shallow Water Anchors. Over 20 years ago, you know, we started out building our power pole shallow water anchors, but our product offering has expanded a lot more these days. We've got our shallow water anchors in many different models. We can work on anything from as small as a stand-up paddle board up to the biggest bay boat and pontoon. We also have our power pole charging system, which charges your entire boat when you're at home, charges when you're running on the water, and it has an emergency start built in. But now, with our new power pole move trolling motor, we can move your boat, stop your boat, and charge your boat. So the full product line from PowerPole really covers you from prop to prop, bow to stern. For more information, go to PowerPole.com and that's your PowerPole tip.
All right, well, we have Captain Tommy Danger wrapping up this first show of ours. So first of all, Tommy, welcome back. And why don't you tell us what's been biting up in the Northeast region? Thanks, Bree. Excited to be back. Always stoked for the new season. And, it, you know, snook are biting up in my region. Last couple of years, I've kind of said the same thing. You know, we're not really well known here in the Northeast region for snook fishing, but with yet another mild winter this year, the snook are doing well and the population continues to grow, especially in the south end of the region. Now, we're just getting into some of the better times of the year to chase down some of those snook. The better snook fishing is happening from Palm Coast down to Daytona. And I've had some great snook reports coming in from the Flagler Beach and the Tomoka areas. Captain Caleb Blackburn, who fishes those areas quite a bit, he tells me that on the warmer days, the snook have been up shallow. They're chasing shrimp and small mullet in the creeks and the canals, especially around the high bridge area. Now he likes to toss a topwater plug early in the morning and then again at dusk. And then a saltwater assassin paddle tail, he likes that pearl color during the day when the sun's gonna be a little bit higher. Now the nighttime snook fishing is going to be heating up from Palm Coast all the way down to Ponce Inlet as well. Target those lighted docks and the bridges when the tide is moving. Use a diving plug, something like that Berkeley juke plug or even a big live shrimp, a really big one, or a finger mullet. Now there's a lot of smaller snook under those lights, but there's some big girls in there as well, especially around some of those bigger bridges. And there's also a good snook, po uh, snook population up in Jacksonville and in St. Augustine. Some of those larger and longer creeks like Pablo Creek, San Sebastian, Pellicer Creek, those are all holding decent populations of snook, especially if you know where to look around. Now there's also quite a few freshwater lakes and of course uh, golf course ponds are great. Those are gonna hold the snook as well. And we can also look forward to some bigger snook showing up at the St. Augustine and Matanzas Inlets this summer and during the mullet run later into the summer and early fall. And speaking of inlet caught snook, I've got a photo here. And this is my buddy who some of you may know from Janung's fish camp, Drew Flores with a big snook that he caught at Matanzas Inlet on a free lined live shrimp. Now, also inshore guys, you know what? I got to start off the season by talking about my favorite fish, of course, the redfish. Now, we also just happen to have a great midday low tide this weekend which is gonna be the perfect tide for this time of year to catch some redfish. Now, my plan is gonna be for my clients this weekend, we're gonna get up at first light or get out there first light and we're gonna to toss a topwater plug, that Berkeley Jaywalker right along the grass lines and the oyster bar edges on that higher tide. You know, this is something Rick and I did a couple seasons ago on Sportsman's Adventures and we caught a bunch right around this time of year. And that's really one of my favorite times of year to toss a topwater plug. You know, the redfish, the big trout, and even those snook we were talking about get fired up to eat some finger mullet as they start to show up in better numbers over the next couple of months. Now, once the tide gets out, guys, switching to a live mullet or mud minnow is going to be a good bet. Creek bends and oyster bars on the flats are going to be go-to spots for redfish this weekend. Now, we've also been having some success fishing the docks on the last of the outgoing tide. I'll use something like a quarter to a three eighths ounce saltwater assassin jig head, just depending on how fast the tide is moving and pin either a mud minnow or a shrimp to that jig head. Now, I recently had our hostess with the mostest Bree up to the Northeast region hmm. to catch some redfish. Hmm. And I've got a picture of that here. It this was is not Bree and I with me, uh, one all. of them. <laughs> not cold at all, but not. we had quite a few double ups under some docks. Sometimes you got to go to the docks when conditions get tough and, uh, Thanks, Bree. I had a good time having you that up here catching some fish. So Bree, he never took me to no dock. Well, you know, you're not the hostess Damn, with the most. <laughs> All right, keep going. Tell us offshore, bub. <laughs> All right, man, the cobia, you know, we've had somewhat of a funky start to our beach cobia season. The weather and the water were really warm a couple of weeks ago, or really a few weeks ago, but things have cooled back off a little bit. But it's probably going to warm up again real fast. Those manta rays and the cobia have been hit or miss, but they have been out there. If we get a couple of nice, calm, sunny days, it's probably worth a look. Just zigzag between about 25 and 50 feet right off the beach. Keep your eye out for some of those giant manta rays. Hopefully they'll have some big cobia right on their backs. Now also offshore, we've had some cool stuff happening offshore. We've had a good number of blue marlin caught this winter and spring east of St. Augustine. You know, most of these fish have come as a bycatch while the Wahoo tournament guys have been high speed trolling and they're catching a lot of Wahoo right now too. Now there's been an early run of some decent sized Mahi 
as well, which attracts those big marlins. Now, if you're looking to get one, the next couple of months would be a good time to get out there and look. And I've got one last photo. This is our buddy, Captain Gibb, along with Frank Vining, vining with a nice blue marlin that Gibby caught east of St. Augustine aboard the boat, the High Premium. All nice. right, Tommy, thank you. It's good to see you back on camera. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at Strike Zone hotspots as quickly as we can. He says, inshore, redfish and trout along the grass edges on the flats throughout the region at first light. Toss the Berkeley Jaywalker 120 along the grass and the oysters, as well as around the schools of mullet and then offshore. A mixed bag on the troll near the ledge. Wahoos, mahis, and even an occasional marlin are in the mix. Sounds good to me. But Rick, we have done it again and kicked off the 2023 season with all reports and captains accounted for. We've got another species lined up for next week, so stick around to hear what it is. That's right. Well, gentlemen, we are talking Cobia next week. We made it through our first week here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Thank you all for joining us. Go out there and catch them snook, right? That's Happy it. birthday, Mom. Happy oh, birthday. Bye, Mom. Happy birthday. <laughs>